We're going to be having a wonderful time and sharing some experiences with the one and only Archbishop Margaret Benton Idahosa for her 77th birthday. Take us back to 1998 and your journey from that moment to where we are today and how you can maybe shed light on some of the, the emotions, the feelings, and then the, the triumph, the rising from the ashes. Take us through a little bit of that because I feel that there are some women who this has not happened to yet, but it may happen to, and they need to kind of start, you know, get prepared for that. And then for those who it has newly or recently happened to, they need to see some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. And then for those who have lived with it for so long, they also need to be encouraged as well. So if you could take us through 1998 and then bring us to 2020, that would be... Um, thank you for that again. I can talk on that for, year, for, 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 for days. But before I answer that, being or becoming a widow it's not the end of life. Mm -hmm. Life still goes on. Mm -hmm. Especially when you know that your husband or your wife that passed, they are not behind you. They are in your future. Mm -hmm. You take heart. It is painful that physically they are not here. But spiritually, you know where they are. And one of these days, either you go or Christ comes, will be reunited. That has been my pillar. Mm -hmm. That has been my joy. That one day, we will reunite together. Even though there is no marriage mm -hmm. in heaven, according to the word of God. But at least we will see you you see him. so I, I want to encourage all widows to become a widow it's not the end of your life a widow or a widower it's not the end of your life life must go on i hope this is clear then coming to your question uh becoming a widow or Taking my, my mind back to March 1998, my dear, it was no, no joke. I mean, we had left here together to America for a very big crusade. And when we finished the crusade, my husband said, No, before I left, before we left to I said, Honey, every time we go to America together, you always leave me behind. <laughs> but this one, you are not leaving me behind. I'm going with you and coming back with you. He said, okay, no problem, darling. No problem at all. So when we finished the crusade, he told me, he said, honey, this is the beginning of the year. I want you to visit the children and see if the uh, school fees have been paid or not paid, if they are okay and all that. I said, eh. Hey, why did you have to bring this one up? And you know, every woman, when you talk about children, mm -hmm. there's an emotion that goes towards it. And because of that, I said, okay, I will definitely go. So he left me on the uh, eight. He left me on the eight. And I went because we, we were very close to where my sisters are. Uh, Vegas. So I said, let me just do the farthest one and then come to Atlanta, go to Tulsa, go to go around like that. I was just in um, Vegas when I had the telephone. Mm -hmm. Professor Aquata called me and said, Mom, uh, uh, that, that wants you at home. And I said, for what? He said, it's not feeling well. I said, uh, you are lying to me. Mm -hmm. Something has happened. I have been married now for all these donkey years. My husband has never been sick, and he has never been to the hospital. The, 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 the worst he has ever had is 
having catar and cold. And that's it. And we call the doctor, doctor from state medical, they examine him, say, ah, mom, just uh, make pepper soup for him and let, let him drink and, and they administer whatever they have. He has never been to the hospital. Hmm. He said, no, 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 I can't tell you a lie. I can't tell you a lie. I can't tell you a lie. I said, okay, no problem. All right. Another phone came in. Another one came in. I said, ah, something has happened. Hmm. But none of them told me what happened. My sister, Ladona, husband, mm -hmm. now called me and said, Margaret, dad is gone. Ah, I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. You thought she, she meant her father. I thought she meant her father. T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay. Uh, my sister has gone to work now. Mm -hmm. I will give her a call to book me a ticket. And maybe I will come there in the night. She said, oh, Margaret, I'm not talking of T.L. Mm -mm. I'm talking of Archbishop Benson in the house. I said, what? Mm -hmm. It's not. He said, I can't lie to you. Mm -hmm. As I am talking to you now, I'm broken on the inside. It was then it dawned on me. You know, you know why it dawned on me like that? Because that particular day, that 12th of March, he woke up very early. Mm -hmm. Because if we are apart, we call ourselves like boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> he called me and said, Margaret, uh, are you still sleeping? I said, you know, you know the time now, I'm still sleeping. I'm going to money prayer. I said, okay, when you come back, call me. Went to money prayer, came back, called me. And then we started uh, a Thursday school of prayer for the women. And I said, you know, we just started. Please go there, anoint them for me, do whatever you want to do for them. And he did. When he came back, he, he told me, say, Margaret, I have done what you said. I have anointed them. You have your anointing oil. I said, I have. Oh, okay, go get it. So I went and I got my anointing oil. He said, put it on your forehead. Hmm. And say this, hmm. it is my turn. Hmm. I said, oh, yes, it's my turn. It's my <laughs> turn. It's my turn. I didn't oh, know no. he was seeing mm -hmm. what I wasn't seeing. Mm -hmm. He was prophesying what will happen. And I did it and I said, oh, it's, it's done. He said, that was what I told them at the meeting, that it is their turn to become what they want to be in the gospel, in preaching, in deliverance, in signs and wonders and all that. I said, okay, me, I accept my, I am going to be that too. So when... Uh, Laduna called me and I was saying, he told me that I should say it's my turn. Well, I cried. Mm -hmm. I packed a few things that I'm able to pack. And I went and I came home. And I made, and I made that it was true. Everyone danced around it. But she was the only one that told me. And, I, and so I prepared myself mm. to meet whatever I would meet at home. Mm. When I got to Lagos, my sister came, came with me. She didn't have a visa, so we had to climb up and go and meet the Alga. We now came home and I met what I met. But you know, I thought my, my, my life was over. Mm. My life was well. You always stay in school. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, T.L. now called. I said, Margaret. T.L. Osborne. Yeah, T.L. Osborne now mm -hmm. called. I said, Margaret, I want you to take heart. There is nothing that has never happened before. Mm -hmm. I said, I should take heart. Yeah. How? He had also lost his partner. Oh, yes. Dr. Daisy. That's also. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. He told me how Daisy, his wife, passed. Mm -hmm. And see, she is still going on. I said, okay, no, no problem. I, I, could, I couldn't uh, change what has happened. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, all right, I have to 
to take heart as uh, T.L. has uh, has done. Then a pop came, a pop called. Many, many, many of our friends, they were calling me and they were praying and I was gathering my strength, you know. But one thing came into my heart and that is at 55, I have become a widow. I, it never crossed my mind that, I, that he will go first. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, me, after passing 90, what, what will I be doing here? <laughs> no, 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 no. But all of a sudden, at 55, I have become a widow. And I said, God, over to you. My life is over to you. Whatever you want to do with my life, do it. Mm -hmm. And God told me, this has happened to you so that you can strengthen others that mm -hmm. are passing through the same thing. That's that right. was how uh, taking care of the widow started. Mm -hmm. And then I added the, the less privilege, mm -hmm. the, the, my sister's place and all, all that. But in all, I have this to say, that to God be the glory, yeah. that I'm able to stand to the... There are still days that I don't want to get up from the bed. I still cry. Mm -hmm. But after crying, clean out, clean your eyes up, get up. Take, a, take a shower, and then go to the office. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, is, go, is going on. So I advise women. Mm. There is nothing that has never happened mm. the, the the bible said whatever has happened is still it will still happen mm. and it will still happen so my dear whatever it is i want you to know that it has happened there's nothing you can do about it ask god take over this small little heart that is still beating and whatever i'm able to do help me to do it for myself, my family, and not only that, for the people around me, for humanity. Amen. Amen. So we're going to switch up a little bit. Um, if you, you are 77 years old and you have had quite a journey, I don't think there's anyone that can say it was a straight from A to B, straight line journey. Um, if you were to look back and tell, talk to your, if you go back 47 years and you're talking to the 30-year-old Margaret Idahosa, um, who has not had all, the, all this experience now that you have, who is not leading several organizations and doing so, so well, what would you say to that 30-year-old Margaret Idahosa? What would you tell her? What would you, you, you had just gotten married. I think you, you had had your first child. I think you had had... By then you would have had uh, your first child or about to have your first child. What would you say to her? What would you say to her looking back now, the things that you know now and how she was then? Would you, what would you tell her? Well, how would you encourage her? What would you tell her to brace herself for? Um, how, what would you tell her uh, in terms of grit, in terms of being brave? What would, you, what would your words be to her? Number one, I will say, Life is not a rehearsal. Mm. You wake up, you eat, you go back to sleep, you wake up. It's not a rehearsal. The, my husband said, if he was to name this word again, he would name it trouble. trouble. <laughs> so, as a young woman, Life is not a bed of roses. Mm. You take life one day at a time. One day at a time. And taking your daily readings from God, that's all I have ever known in my life. Taking your daily readings from God and the Lord God will direct you. In your marriage, make sure you and your husband, you pray together. There's an adage that says, family that prays together, they stay together. I don't know how far that is, but this is my own experience. 
make sure you pray together. You read the word of God together many, many times. If there is no time for you to pray together, to read the word together, maybe he's, he has uh, uh, something to do in his office or he has somewhere to go very early. Yes, you sit down, pray together, read the word of God, and then schedule what you want to do for the day. Number one, number two, number three, number four. And if you are not able to do number four, don't kill yourself. There is another day. Another day you start all over again. Make sure you have a purpose in life. You are purpose driven. Mm -hmm. And that one will drive you from point A to point B because you have something that you have in your mind to do. Maybe at 30, 33 or 35 or 38, you haven't had children yet. Put it down. My first child. You know, our first child's name was given to us six months after we married. Wow. God gave it to us. And then you but, waited for yes, years. Yes, wow. and we waited for four years. Wow. So, my dear, there is nothing that has ever happened that is, is from the blues. Mm. It has happened before, it will happen again, and it will continue to happen. It is not only you that things are happening to, plus the fact that things happen to men. Men, when I, when I mean men, I mean women and mm. men. Mm -hmm. Things don't happen to trees. Mm. The things that happen to trees, whether you cut it down and make firewood with it. For the things that happen to man, you, you, you have to brace it up and give it to God and say, God, I give it to you. And God will never, 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 never allow you to bear that which you cannot bear. That is the word of God. So I believe that when you dedicate your life to God and whatever happens on the way, the Bible says, if you are in the waters, he will be with you. Amen. If you are in the fire, he will be with you. He will always be there. Just believe God. Because whatever you believe, you become. If you believe that you are able to conquer things, you will definitely do. If you talk positively to yourself, it will become, it will, it, it will become that. But if you are so negative about your life, that is how it's going to be. If you do not embrace yourself with the love of God, you will go the other way. But if you embrace the word of God, embrace, embrace the love of God, and you will see God in your life doing what you have asked God to do for you. COVID-19 has come and they have been a lockdown. But I tell myself, this is not the time to weep and cry and be sorrowful. This is the time to think. <laughs>